ีค่ะ Good morning, distinguished guests, executives, ladies and gentlemen. I'm j a l u n i Vitanadesha. It's really great pleasure of mine to welcome all of you to the fourth SD Forum in 2014 today under the topic "Investing for Sustainability, Pursuing Impact and Profit in Globally Diversified Portfolios." First of all. May I welcome our chairman of the Stock Exchange of Thailand, Dr. s a t i t Lim p o n g p a n to deliver the welcoming remarks on stage. Please welcome her. Professor Dr. k u n p a t r a Sirodom, Mr. Paul Herman. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to welcome uh, Mr. Paul Herman today. I met Mr. Herman last year at t h a m a s a t University, together with Dr. k u n p a t r a He gave a lecture on human impact plus profit. I was very impressed by his lecture at Thammasat University last year. I had a chance uh, to discuss with him later on after his speech. He agreed that uh, this year he would come to the stock exchange of Thailand to deliver his speech, and today is the day that he comes to SET and is going to deliver his speech on human impact plus profit. He looks younger than 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 last year, actually, <laughs> Mr. Herman. I asked him why. He told me that because he's working on sustainability. That's why he looks younger and younger every year. <laughs> I would like to inform uh, Mr. Herman and and distinguished guest that. The Stock Exchange of Thailand, or SET, has been working uh, very hard on convincing uh, listed company and institutional investors to take into account of uh, social investment. When we talk about social investment. The stock exchange of Thailand is now in the process of applying to be the sustainable stock exchange with uh, an agency of the United Nations. There are ten stock exchange now in in the list of sustainable stock exchange. We expect to be the eleventh. Member of Sustainability Stocks Exchange. At the same time, we are in the process of setting up what we call SET Sustainability Index, in which listed company can uh, work with us and to be on that list. In A broader uh, perspective, the concept of social uh, responsible investment has been uh, accepted uh, globally, starting from the UN uh, principle principles of uh, responsible investment. There are six principles. Of UN principles for responsible investment, in which many institutional investors adhere to that principle before making any decision 
for investment. Professor uh, Michael Potter uh, talked about uh, creating share value in which he tries to integrate the, uh, business with social purpose. His idea has been promoted among academics uh, worldwide. Putting a concept into action, Dow Jones Sustainability Index is a global uh, institution, institution recognized by uh, investors, setting up uh, what they call Dow Jones Sustainability Index. There are now four Thai companies in that index, PTT, SCG, PTD, CG, and Thai Oil. We expect to have more Thai listed company into that list this year. There are other index, uh, for example, uh, FTSE for good in, in Europe, in which we are uh, trying to connect to that index and encourage Thai listed company to be uh, on the list as well. And today we are very fortunate to to have uh, Mr. Paul Herman talking about his index, another well-known and famous index or criteria for investment for all investor, institutional or general investor. HIP is well-known globally as well as in Thailand. He has come to Thailand to Thammasat University at least two years. This is his third year, I, I guess. HIP uh, will be more popular after his speech today, I, I hope. Dr. Kunpatra uh, will uh, introduce uh, briefly about Mr. Paul Herman and his HIP investor concept. I would like to uh, invite Dr. Kupatra on stage to introduce to uh, Dr. Paul, uh, Mr. Paul Herman. Please give a big applause to Mr. Paul Herman. Chairman of the Stock Exchange of Thailand, Dr. Satit Lim Hong Pan, Paul Herman, uh, audience, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'll be briefly introducing our speaker uh, today. Um, we call him Kun Paul. Kun Paul Herman created the HIP methodology for entrepreneurs. HIP or HIP stands for Human Impact and Profit. Um, also for companies and investors, uh, investors worldwide to realize how quantifiable sustainability can drive financial performance. And I think that's what we are interested in, how sustainability drive uh, financial performance. Now, Paul advises investors, uh, designs uh, HIP portfolios, and manages the HIP index indices, for example, like the, um, the HIP 100 and the HIP Global Dividends. Now these are all applying the HIP scorecard featured in his 2010 book, The HIP Investor, Make Bigger Profits by Building a Better World. Now usually these two words don't go together, profit and better world, but in this context, uh, in, in this context you will see that yes, Profit and better world can go together. Now, it is also featured in Fast Company magazine, business school curricula, and at the worldwideweb.hipinvestor.com. Now, Paul uh, studied um, finance uh, at Warren School uh, and gained experience from McKinsey. Uh, 
He also uh, had experience working with social entrepreneurs at Ashoka uh, uh, and uh, Omidyar Network, which is a well-known uh, social uh, enterprise. Uh, he has also advised leading corporations, including Walmart and Nike, family offices, and foundations on how to be more hip. Now, his insights have been quoted in the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, Fortune, Forbes, Business Weeks, CNN, Reuters, Morning Stars, CNBC, and many more. Now, at Tamasat University, we have been working together with Paul for many years. He has brought his insights in impact investing to the international MBA classroom and also as a judge for the global social venture competition Southeast Asia, I think since 2008, uh, which the Stock Exchange of Thailand has been a great supporter of the event. So uh, I think for the process of being a sustainable stock exchange of Thailand should be not too far a goal that uh, uh, we can all uh, see. So um, thank you very much, Paul, for being here today. And uh, please, this is all yours. Thank you. Sawadikap. Pleasure to meet everybody. Uh, I'm uh, delighted to be here. And it was a very generous introduction from uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, Dr. S uh, Dr. Santit, uh, delighted that uh, the president of the Stock Exchange uh, is here as well, uh, Kun Kesara, and um, uh, really appreciate your heartfelt uh, welcome and introduction. And after the next uh, two hours, we will all be two hours younger. <laughs> and when the Sustainable Stock Exchange launches, if you invest in that, you will get younger as well. So that's the essence of what we're going to talk about is how human impact and profit can be aligned. Uh, and I would, had the pleasure of uh, teaching at Thomasat for the past several years. First, teaching social entrepreneurship at the IMBA program at Thomasat, and now an impact investing class. So I want to appreciate uh, uh, Aj Kulpatra for um, helping to organize today and to bring sustainable investing to the top of uh, this discussion. And also want to uh, thank Aj Ed Urbesh for uh, originally inviting me into Southeast Asia and Thailand, Bangkok, Thammasat, and of course the Global Social Venture Program. Uh, and if you ever compete in it, I may be part of your judging panel. Uh, and I especially want to thank you for investing your morning today because the ability of sustainability to drive profitability, to reduce risk, to drive the creation of value, to create sustainable competitive advantage, and to benefit society, hopefully you will learn how to do that uh, this morning. Uh, some of you in the audience may have already read this book. It is available on ebook as well uh, as physical. Uh, there is a copy in English and now one in the Polish language. Maybe one, there will be one in Thai language soon. And so today is meant to be interactive. I could talk continuously and I have no lack of information to share. But what I want is to be engaging and interactive. So please, if you do have a question, raise your hand or stand up. And this is meant to be as interactive as possible. Uh, if we had a whiteboard here, we would run an exercise where I'd ask all of you to come to the whiteboard to plot a company that you're thinking of and how sustainable and profitable it is. Uh, and that usually helps to break the ice. But, um, but let's, let's get started and let's talk about how Human impact and profit, those words can go together, uh, and how you can build a globally diversified portfolio that can be as good or even better than traditional finance might uh, tell you. 
And if you do read the hit book, it is in addition to Thomasat at 20 other universities globally, including Stanford and Berkeley and Northwestern and NYU. Um, so just one uh, page of description about what we do at HIP Investor. So HIP stands for Human Impact and Profit. And my background is a combination of finance training at the Wharton School, McKinsey focused on energy companies, creating incentive regulation. Uh, my first company built a financial services organization for parents, teenagers, and kids. And we grew that to 30,000 customers over three years. And I, when I first engaged with Ashoka, who many of you know, I was the head of the North America program for Ashoka, but also the chief development officer worldwide. So I've seen uh, dozens of so, uh, social entrepreneurs in countries around the world who are building a better world as a nonprofit that could build an even more better world if they were business, had a profit engine, or had the capital of the $200 trillion in capital markets. Uh, before I started HIP eight years ago, uh, I spent a year working for the founder of eBay, Pierre Omidyar. And so he uh, invests in microfinance around the world, as well as individual empowerment. So when you ask him what his investment thesis is, his investment thesis is everyone has the power to build a better world. That's his investment thesis. You can make money doing that. So what we do at HIP is uh, we're now in our eighth year, lucky eight. We have rated, we rate more than 7,000 investments that include Thai companies. We'll show you some of those ratings during our discussion. We rate companies on how they create value for stakeholders, customers, employees, the environment, society. And we, and I will show you how we do this, are able to map that to the financial statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, statement of cash flows. Now what you get taught in school is those are externalities. But really, nature does not have externalities. Nature is interconnected. So a strong, resilient portfolio is interconnected. Every action has a consequence. The more you take accountability looking towards the future for those consequences, the more strong and resilient you will be. The strongest species on Earth have figured out how to adapt. If you run a business that is unsustainable, you will not become a 100-year company like SCG has, or a handful of other Thai companies have, or Coca-Cola is a 100-year brand. So what does it take, let's just reflect on this, what does it take to build a 100-year brand? To be around in 100 years, you need to plan for at least 100 years. And if you uh, tracked uh, what was happening at the Fukushima nuclear power plant when they had the tsunami a couple years ago, they had planned for a 100-year flood. When they were clearing the land on the hill above the Fukushima plant, they found a rock. And on that rock, in Japanese handwriting, katakana, they said, this was the site of the flood above the power plant of a tsunami 1,000 years ago. So the more forward-looking that you are about your time frame, the stronger, less risky, more resilient, and we will show you even more profitable you can be. And if you don't do that, if you're not sustainable, you shouldn't expect your species or your company to last very long. All right, so that's exciting, right? <laughs> so let's bring it up. So we rate, we advise investors, financial advisors, institutional investors, retirement plans, and fund managers. 
And then to show that this works, because it's tough to believe at first, there are some skeptics, we've been running the HIP100 index, which I'm proud to announce that uh, uh, as, of, um, as of today, Thai time, and yesterday, US time, we've completed our five year uh, anniversary. So uh, the HIP100 index is now five years old, and we have beaten the S&P 100 significantly. Okay. So my lawyers need me to read this, so please read this slide. Past performance is not indicative of future return, and this is not an offer of securities, and all investing risks losing your money. And then please read this. This basically says when we talk about the, the index again, you might lose money. Past performance is not indicative of future return. Yet when you select an investment, what do you look at? Past performance. So the lawyers tell us, don't look at past performance and expect it to succeed. Yet all of us behave in that way. So is there anything that looks towards the future? So what is this? This is a quiz. A cat. How do you know it's a cat? The figure. But can you see the eyes of the cat? Why does it look this way? What type of image of a cat is it? Correct. It is a heat map of a cat. All of us recognized it. We know this shape, this image. We don't see this way unless we have night vision. Maybe you do. I don't yet. Maybe when I get younger. This is a metaphor for how you can look at your portfolio. Because there is visible light an invisible light. Invisible light is a heat map. If we turned out the lights here and there was a snake in the room, the snake could find us. Or a bat or other night creatures. But when we look at our own investment portfolios, we only look at them with the lights on. We don't look at them with the lights off. So what sustainability is about is, what is the full spectrum of light, gamma rays, x-rays, infrared, radio waves? You all have phones using radio waves, but you can't see the energy. But it's there. So that's what we're going to talk about. Knowable information, in many cases publicly available, but ignored. Knowable but ignored information about your portfolio and your companies. Because all we do when we analyze an investment is look at what? What do we look at when we look at a, an investment? Financial statements. And so if you were driving a car, the financial statements is what part of the car? What do the financial statements tell you? Past performance tells you how good you did. So it's like looking in the rear view mirror. But when you're driving, even in Bangkok, you should be looking out the front windshield. So what we're going to proceed to explore is how to look out the front windshield during the day or at night to see knowable but ignored factors about the health of a company that you can build into your portfolio. All right, questions so far? No questions? All right, I'll say something more provocative then. All right. Who is the predator and who is the victim? Or who is the investor in this photo? Hopefully, if you're good enough, you can see what's coming. But there's a wave, there's a shark, there's a diver, maybe with a spear gun. 
There's bacteria in the water. And I once uh, went to the beach at Koh Lanta, and I got in the water. I didn't see anything. And all of a sudden, my skin started to tingle. And it was little, tiny, stinging, tiny. You couldn't even, you could not see them. And when you got out, you couldn't see them until they dried up. So there are many risks, some of which you can see, some of which you can't see. I didn't stay in the water long. So future risk. Who can predict the future? Nobody? All right. Who thinks about risk? OK, good. Good answer. Now, when you talk about investments, most people talk about return. But unless you talk about risk, the return is not 100% meaningful. Because to get high return, you usually need to take what kind of risk? High risk to get high return. But we only look at the return, usually. So we also want to look at the future risk and the upside. All right, so this is a picture of the S&P 500. I worked at McKinsey, so you're going to see a lot of charts. Some of them might even be a two by two grid. This is a picture of the market value relative to the book value. So in, and this is the Standard & Poor's 500, it's companies who are primarily based in the US. Today, the S&P 500, more than half of the revenue from companies on the S&P 500 is international. It is only 50% domestic US revenue and 50% international revenue from developed markets, emerging markets, frontier markets. So back in 1975 in the US, there was a lot of physical manufacturing. Plant, property, and equipment made up 83% of the stock market value of the companies listed then. Today, that 83% has become 20%. The physical assets on the balance sheet, cash, receivables, inventory, property, plant, and equipment, goodwill. That's only 20%. The stock market value is five times the balance sheet value. How could that be? Why is the stock market pricing for these companies five times more than the balance sheet? Anybody? Future income. How are you going to generate the future income? Does it take assets? Are you getting future income from invisible assets? Accessibility? So you're saying more investors are competing for the stock and it's driving the price up? Is that? Yeah, OK. So more demand, OK. But when you buy an investment, you're expecting a return. So if you drive the price up, how do you know you're going to get a return? Because the, the price to earnings is an indicator. So if the price goes up, the earnings have to go up, right? unless you're starting to pay inflated. So where are the earnings come from? How are earnings coming from invisible assets? Here's one answer. This is something called the Ocean Thermal Patent Index. It started in 2007 and ran till about 2012. It looked at the publicly available information of patents in the uh, intellectual property office, mapped those to the companies, and then rated the portfolio, weighted the portfolio and the companies that had the most highest quality patents. And then they started an index, like we're talking about sustainability index for Thailand. This is a patent index for global companies. And over this time period, this patent index was up 7%, and the uh, Standard & Poor's index was down 4%. So this is a pretty significant number. 
why did this uh, why did this fund 